Okay, um, let's get started. People still kind of gathering, but okay. Um, my name is Jun Nakajima from uh, Intel. Uh, we've been working on uh, real time and then especially in the context of uh, OPNFB. So we are really, you know, uh, real time guys because uh, we're working on, uh, for example, the real time KVM. So today I want to sh share some uh, BKM, some uh, and then the methodologies. How are we gonna, you know, analyze and debug uh, real-time applications uh, in cloud? Okay. So this is actually kind of sequel to the presentation we made, uh, we gave at uh, the last uh, summit uh, in Austin, which was uh, basically. Uh, the building a real-time cloud using OpenStack. Um, once you build a real-time cloud, and it's possible, or well, even very likely, you're gonna see a problem, right? Um, so, th to solve that kind of problem, I think we need to have a structured way of handling those problems. So I'll share that uh, some simple methodology methodologies to solve, uh, the, you know, such real-time problems. And then uh, uh, we sh propose some monitoring uh, the architecture for uh, real-time op uh, OpenStack. Okay. So this is what I, you know, presented at the uh, uh, last uh, sum uh, Austin summit. To refresh your memory, um, first of all, uh, the OpenStack is actually ready to build a real-time cloud. Yeah. Uh, we have a software stack, for example, Nova Flavor and then Hypervisor. We even have a real-time hypervisor, like a real-time KBM. And uh, of course, you can use the containers if you use a real-time uh, Linux, for example. The point he here is to make a real-time cloud uh, you need to reserve system resources, for example, the CPU or memory. And also, depending on the real-time requirements, what I mean is, for example, you're talking about um, 100 milliseconds or 10 milliseconds or 100 microseconds or 10 microseconds or even less. Okay. Depending on the uh, real-time requirements, you may need to, for example, use more hardware-centric solution as well. But the point here is, again, you need to resolve system resources based on your real-time requirements. That's kind of a given. Oh, sorry. This is very sensitive. Okay. Then, also, other thing is, why it's working, I know. Okay, I'll stop using this one, probably. I need to use this one. Okay. Uh, the other technique is the host aggregates. I think you are familiar with the host aggregates, but the purpose of a host aggregate is to provide a consistent host environment uh, in, uh, in a cloud. Uh, I'll t talk about more on this one, why. But, um, if you don't have a consistent host environment, every time you run, that the people will see different environment, right, the different machines. So it's very hard to reproduce the same thing. Okay. And if you're interested in uh, the, the last presentation, there's a link here, so. So analyzing debugging in cloud is actually more difficult, okay. The reason is, uh, the host machine can change uh, uh, every time you run, right? Because you don't have a control. And other thing is that the neighbor, neighbors can change at any time, right? And that's not uh, under your control either, right? So because of that, it's hard to reproduce the same run, uh, runtime environment, okay? 
So that's the reason we are, uh, you know, say, uh, suggesting you use host aggregate so that you can have a consistent or you, or, uh, you as a user or you as an admin to provide the same consistent runtime environment every time, okay? So that's a key. The other challenge is, uh, in the cloud is, it's hard to get the performance data and performance data from the host machine. Because if you're running a VM or a process, right, the scope is very limited. You need to get the real uh, performance data from the host machine. And today, the OpenStack uh, you know, API doesn't provide that kind of information, especially for real time. Okay? Today's data is not uh, good enough. It means not the precise enough to resolve that the real time issues. So I'll have a, a, some proposal to fix, to enhance this. Okay, so I'll talk about uh, kind of methodology. Um, this, this is just a structured way of, again, uh, handling the, the problems. So the first foremost, the prevention is more, uh, the very important, right? Be, be, before jumping into debugging, you really want to prevent and check the runtime environment is something you are expecting. Okay, it's good enough or not. I'll talk about more on how you're gonna check, I mean, how uh, in the, the following slide. But again, the checking those, uh, for example, the context switch, process switch, or how many interrupts are you getting, or you know how frequent uh, the VM exit, or sometimes you may want to look at the cache misses as well. If you're looking at the very you know tight real time, like a microsecond type kind of thing. So once you make sure your runtime is good enough, okay, it's something you are expecting, <clears throat> then you you run, right? And while you run probably you, you want to monitor, but when you monitor, you don't want to bother you know, that uh, real-time environment. So the monitoring cost must be minimal. Okay. <clears throat> then when you find some issues, problem, then you start using more you know, expensive uh, tool to get uh, detailed data, so that should be kind of on demand, okay? In this case, uh, it's okay to disturb real-time thing because you already have a problem, okay? So having an uh, expensive, uh, you know, uh, tool, expensive, not the price, okay? And, uh, the system wor uh, workload will be okay. Then uh, basically you repeat this kind of process until you don't see the problems. Okay, so this is uh, the cyclic test. A cyclic test is uh, popular among real-time uh, you know, you know, application developers. And this is very simple. This is uh, just a benchmark to measure latency. Oh, I didn't, I didn't touch. <laughs> Just don't want, why? I don't know. Okay. I don't know how to debug this one. But <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so what it does is very simple. So it set up a time, timer, let's say T1, and uh, at the time expiration, you measure that, uh, that time, which is T2, then you calculate the delta T2 minus T1 and just repeat, okay? That way you can measure basically the latency from the time expiration, okay? What it can suggest is, for example, uh, you, you, you have some issues, or, uh, by the way, uh, you, you want to run in this in a VM, okay, or a container. Then you can tell if you have a scheduling latency or interrupt latency by looking at the output from the cyclic test. Um, this is a T1 
typical output. Okay. And you probably want to look at this one. This one tells that the maximum latency. Okay. So 28, this, uh, the unit is a microsecond, is a good. Uh, of course, we have a, you know, a reasonably good environment when we run this. But if you run in a VM, if, and if you don't see anything, then you're going to see much higher value, okay? Even sometimes a millisecond or 100 millisecond level, okay? So make sure uh, run this in a VM, okay? Oh, so. Okay, so that's thing done with this one, and then and make sure you don't see some outliers, okay? That's the first thing, okay? Then other tool is a PARF, okay? This is a part of Linux, and distros of, uh, you know, usually provide some package for PARF, and you can install this one. And this can be used to analyze various events, including hardware and software events, okay? Again, I don't know. Sorry, I don't know what's happening, but um, <clears throat> and um, you can also, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm not doing any magic here, so, but uh, anyway, okay. And I, I'm fine with this one, okay. And then, so in case of uh, this is a, a, you know, how you use a PARF, okay, and if the guest or process is uh, well isolated, and this is an example when you run just uh, you know, uh, the power for five seconds, okay, and count the number of a context switch, okay. If it's well isolated, then that should be uh, zero, but in case of a non-isolated case, you see 103 times during the past five seconds, okay? So that way, uh, you know, if you, this is not good, right? Because uh, you try to, you probably want to isolate the guest, you reserve the, for example, system, um, like a CPU to the guest, and don't do any oversubscription. But if you see this kind of number, something is wrong. So other tool is okay. other tool is F trace, and this is also good to get the more detailed data, debugging, analyze latency. Okay, you can also you know get the context switch information, BM exit or hardware interrupt, and overhead is uh, it depends on what kind of event are you going to. Uh, Major, and this is a typical output from a, a F trace. So uh, you, you can see the process and the CPU number, and then the, this is a timestamp in a microsecond. This part is a microsecond, and this is a second. Okay, and this is an event, and a, a more information like a PID, other things. Okay, so this provides very detailed information because it has a timestamp, okay, in microsecond, and also provides that the CPU, okay. The example, okay, it's probably, it's hard to, for you to uh, see this one, but this is very simple, okay. I go through this one. Oops. Um, we are looking at just the VM exit data, okay? And this one tells the VM exit happened at this time, okay, on this processor, and then go back to the, the same VM, okay? Look at the time difference. You see only one microsecond difference, right? So it means whenever a VM exit happens, the CPU go back to the gas within microsecond, okay? And also look at uh, 
VM exit, this one and this one, okay? So the difference is about one second, okay? So I can tell two things from here. One is um, VM exit happens every one second, okay? And whenever VM exit happens, the, the CPU go back to the, uh, the gas immediately, less than one microsecond. For example, in this case, you see the no difference, right? So it means the time must be less than my, my one microsecond, okay? In this case, it's one microsecond. So again, you can tell two things from here. Okay. So it's not uh, difficult to read this kind of thing. And uh, this is a good, good environment. Okay. So in case of a non-isolated gas, if you, if you have some uh, um, over subscription, let's say you didn't assign the CPU to um, the guest or process, then uh, what, what kind of things are you gonna see? So this, this one is QMU, which means uh, the guest, basically the QMU process, okay? Then somehow uh, on the same CPU, okay, same CPU, something happened. So you see, for example, in this case, a compiler. And compiler ran uh, something and uh, also kernel stuff happens, then um, go back to the QMU again, okay? So if you look at the timestamp, okay, here to here, okay, you see the difference. The time side is same, but if you look at the microsecond portion, okay, you see about 1.5 microsecond, no, so millisecond, okay, difference. So it means for during 1.5 millisecond, the, this guest, this process was not run, okay. So you, depending again, depending on the real time re, um, uh, requirement, this tells that something is wrong if you, re, you know, you set up the environment to meet that kind of uh, uh, real-time requirement, right? Okay. So now um, I propose some uh, enhancement to the monitoring architecture of uh, uh, OpenStack, okay? So those are requirement. Um, of, uh, of our proposal. And then um, one thing is, one key is the, what we need to debug, you know, uh, when, we, when we debug real-time applications in the cloud, we really need to get the data from the host machines, okay? And to that end, we need to extend our, our OpenStack uh, services. At the same, at same time, um, as you saw, for example, some uh, F-trace data can expose other things. For example, you saw some compiler stuff. That's not, that has nothing to do with uh, you, your guest, right? It's basically capturing some other process on the host. So that can expose some other activities, other tenant, for example, activities on the system. So when we expose that kind of, a, uh, provide that kind of performance data, we need to filter so that we can hide that, uh, you know, unrelated or some secure security uh, issues. Okay. And again, to monitor this one, we, don't, we, we cannot bother that the system, right, because that can, you know, break uh, real-time stuff. So the overhead of monitoring must be very low, okay? The other thing is uh, we want to, pro you know, provide uh, the standard or popular real-time um, debugging tool like PARF or F-Trace in OpenStack. 
And then other thing is the on-demand I uh, mentioned, because uh, like F trace, depending on the events, it's uh, expensive uh, or it's a, a heavy workload uh, from kernel point of view to provide uh, some type of uh, F, F trace data. So that, can, that kind of a debugging or an analysis data must be provided on demand, okay? So this is a high, high level overview of a, of a proposal, okay? So green stuff is actually, we already have in OpenStack in Newton release, for example, okay? Uh, for example, the Nova, uh, Nova and the Rebirth has a perf support for limited uh, uh, events, okay? So for example, the context switch information is not available today, but it can provide some limited, I think a cache miss or something like that uh, to today in uh, Rebirth and Nova API, okay? But what we need is probably we need more, uh, for example, scheduling or KVM. Uh, oops. Hmm. It, oops. <laughs> um, information. Um, let me switch this one. This is the problem. So this one, uh, KVM, uh, and then the scheduler from Perf, and then uh, on-demand monitoring, okay? So this is a, a overview of uh, our you know, proposal for monitoring uh, architecture. Um, okay. Oh, one thing is uh, this uh, CMT, uh, MBM is basically the, the cache monitoring uh, technology or memory monitoring, memory bandwidth monitoring, which is required to, uh, um, <clears throat> to get uh, more, you know, low-level data, okay? But it's already in uh, OpenStack today, okay? So this one basically just uh, summarizing what I just, uh, you know, pointed out in the previous picture. So we already have some level of monitoring uh, capability in uh, OpenStack, in Newton releases, uh, Newton release, and then, uh, but uh, for real-time debugging and analysis, uh, we need to extend. For example, we need to add the F-trace and then uh, also perf for, uh, for example, around the scheduling and BM exit or switching. And the other thing is on demand. So when, whenever uh, you know, developers find some issues, uh, we need to provide capability for developers to get more detailed information available from uh, F-Trace, for example. Okay. Okay, um, so this is a kind of my summary page. Um, like I said, uh, the OpenStack is ready to build uh, the real-time cloud. You know, real-time cloud is uh, useful to build, for example, high-performance computing or backend for IoT, right? So, or uh, media processing, and then you can, for example, use uh, Ironic or use a virtual machine, but you need to, you know, resolve system resources, okay, so. But when you run uh, real-time applications on uh, real-time uh, cloud, it's possible uh, to see issues. And today, uh, we don't have uh, the, the, you know, infrastructure to provide uh, the debugging analysis information the key here is, uh, you know, key data, what we need is available on the host machine that the application is running. So in order to get, uh, hmm, I don't know what's, what's happening. Uh, 
we need to provide more data from the host machine. And those, you know, those data are coming from, uh, for example, the perf or FJS data. Okay. And now we propose this the monitoring architecture. And then, uh, yeah, and then uh, one, uh, I think, a point I want to mention is the, uh, the on demand. Again, you don't want to disturb real time activity while doing uh, the monitoring, but when you find issues, then we really need to uh, activate the heavyweight uh, monitoring to get more, you know, the precise and then the detailed data. Okay. So anyway, uh, if you have uh, any shows and then uh, comments, uh, please uh, send that uh, comments to us, uh, you know, email here. And then I have uh, references uh, here. And then I'll post this one uh, later. Um, with that, uh, I think I'll, I'd like to take uh, questions. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe that was uh, almost the first slide, so I need to go back to this one. Uh, This one, I think. So the question was the uh, comment on the SMI. Probably uh, you, many people, oh, yeah, fine. Many people may not be familiar with SMI. So SMI is, uh, you know, typically invisible to software, but uh, this was invented to handle some platform issues or, for example, uh, some uh, work around in a platform, or uh, for example, some events happens. You know, for example, the machine gets hot, then uh, you know something needs to be done and cause. And uh, once this happens, uh, that can um, have a harmful e uh, effect to real time. Because some SMI takes uh, more than you know 100 microseconds, and then it's who is implementing SMI? It's basically the OEMs, right? That uh, the the companies providing that the platforms, and there are some ways to disable SMI, and then uh, we are kind of working on that, but. Uh, uh, Flip side of disabling, uh, you know, the SMI can hurt, you know, harm, harm that the process of the platform also. So, anyway, um, SMI is basically, you know, uh, to in a way to protect the platform, but some cases, uh, you know, some SMIs are not really necessary. For example. Uh, around the USB, for example. So, but for real time, uh, this can have some uh, uh, unexpected uh, behaviors, and it's not really so consistent. So if you run, the, the, for example, cyclic test, and if you see some uh, unexpected, for example, latency, very high latency, and if you're doing the right thing, then probably you might want to suspect SMI. Does that answer your question? That's right, right. Other questions? Let's see. OK, 
Okay, I think uh, I'm done here. Thank you very much. Yeah.